In this video, we're going to create a health bar and control it with visual scripting. In my UI, I want to position the health bar right here. So I'll create an empty object, call it health bar, and I'll stretch it with the rectangular tool to how I want the fill of the health bar to look like. So some like this. Inside the health bar, I'll add a UI image, and this will be my fill. For the source image, I'll pass in this red bar that I have. I'm going to go to a rectangular transform and make sure that I stretch in horizontal and vertical by holding Alt down and clicking on that. That's going to fill that whole health bar. And you might have a foreground or a background, depends on the design of your health bar. I have a background, so I'll add another image and I'll just call it BG. Move that to the back. I have this image for my source image, so I'll drag that. And I want to stretch it so that my bar will actually fit in there. Now you want to stretch the background to fit the fill, not the other way around, because if you do the other way around, you won't be able to control fill properly. So something like that will be great. And I'll also add another image, and this is going to be my icon. So I'll have a heart right there. I'll anchor it to the left, and let's actually position it at zero. So this is the image setup for the health bar. Now, one way you can control the health bar is by switching the image type from sliced to filled. And here we have an option of filling horizontally. Now you can see that we're controlling that bar. So this is one of the approach you can take to control the health bar. But in case you want to use a sliced option or a tiled option for your image. So if I select the slice option, in my case, you can see that whenever I stretch this bar, the rounded edges are not being deformed. That is one of the reasons you would use a sliced option. So let's say I want to actually preserve those uh, rounded edges. So with the image type being used by slice, I can't use the fill option anymore. So the other option that we have here is go into the health bar and add a slider here. Now the slider is intended to be used for a slider, but we can simplify it and use it as a fill bar. I'll turn off interactable. I don't want this bar to be controlled with a mouse. I'm not going to use any transitions, I'm not going to use any navigations. So we can turn all of that off. And the only thing that I'm interested in is in this fill rectangular. For the fill rectangular, I'll pass in the fill game object that I have. And as soon as I connect that, you can see that fill bar actually disappeared. And it's because the default value is zero. So if I change the value now, you can see that that bar is filling up. Now that we have the slider configured, it's time to control it with visual scripting. So I'm going to add a component script machine. And for source, I do like to use embedded for tutorials because it's faster to create. But if you're planning to use the health bar in more than one place in your game, then you want to actually use a graph and create a new graph. So I'm going to actually do that here. I'll call it health bar. Let's go to added graph. And inside here, I can remove these units and add a custom event unit. For event name, I'm going to use update health bar and I'll receive one argument. Whenever this event is going to be triggered, I want to find the slider and set the value for it. And the argument zero is going to be the value that I'll pass in for the slider. Now let's connect this health bar to our player. And the way that I'm going to do this here, since I don't have a player in my game, I'm just going to use the icon that I have for my player right here. And I will add a script machine here. Let's create new, and this is going to be my player script. And before we added graph, I want to add some object variables. So the first variable that I'm going to add here is going to be my health bar. So let's add that. That is going to be a game object, and we can pass that game object as the value. The second variable is going to be my health. I'll use a float for my health. We'll start at 10. And the third variable is going to be my max health. Click add, and this can be also a float, and the value is going to be 10 as well. So you can use these variables to control the health of your player. Let's go to added graph. And in here, the first thing that I want to do on start is update the health bar. Make sure it's displaying the health that I currently have. To do that, we can trigger a custom event. The event name is update health bar. And we need to get that object variable, the health bar that we have connected as the object that we want to trigger this event on. The event has one argument, and the argument should be a value from 0 to 1. 
So the way you calculate that value is getting the health and dividing it by the maximum health. Let's find the divide unit and connect that value as the argument. So right now, whenever we start the game, our health is going to be actually displayed what we have here. So if we start the game with health of eight, it's going to display the appropriate value there. Now let's add some logic that is going to simulate some health loss. So what I'm going to do is add on pointer click. If you click on the penguin icon, what I'm going to do is subtract my health. So let's get my health and then a subtract scalar. I'm just going to subtract one and I want to set the value back to my health. So pass that value in, connect that on pointer click. After we have updated the health, I will trigger that event to update the health bar. And now we have this to simulate our health loss. And we also have this to update our health bar. Let's go back to our game and test this out. So here is our health bar and that is about 80% filled. So now if I click on the penguin, we should lose another 10%. And if I click enough, you can see that all the health actually goes away. Now let me show you how to display the health bar on top of your character in your game. So let's go back here. I'll create a prefab from health bar so we can reuse it. I'll go to my icon player and copy the variable component so that I won't have to re-enter that for the other player. Go to my scene and I'll add the sprite as the player image. So this is going to be my player. In this player, I want to create a canvas. So let's create a canvas. For this canvas, I want to switch to render mode from screen space to world space. And for the camera, I can pass in my camera here. We're set to rectangular transform. And right now you can see that the rectangular is pretty big. So let's actually scale it down and put it to a position where we want our health bar to go. Add the health bar inside here. And I want to change the position of X to zero and scale it to 0 0.03 in all axes. So now I can see the health bar in world space. For this player, I want to add a script machine. And for variables, I want to paste values. Connect the health bar that we have created just right now. And for our graph, we can reuse the player graph that we have created. One change that we'll have to do to the graph is add on mouse down event as well, because on pointer click is for UI elements. And our player is a sprite now. For the click events to be registered on this character, we need to add a collider. So I'm going to add a box collider 2D. So our previous health bar is working. And now if we click on our new player, you can see that that health bar is working as well. Now that works well with a 2D game, but if we actually make this in a 3D game and rotate our player, you can see that the health bar is actually rotating with the player. And we want the health bar always to face the camera. What we can do for that is select our canvas and go create a script machine for our canvas. I'm going to just use an embedded for this one, added graph. And in here on update, I want to access transform and set forward to be same as the forward of our camera. Now let's create an object variable here, camera game object, so that we can connect our main camera here. And we can use this camera object and get the forward from our camera. Pass it to set forward of our UI. And now if our player is rotating, the health bar is still facing our camera. If the player is moving, the health bar is moving with the player. The health bar that I have displayed here can be also used for a progress bar, a hunger bar, or whatever bar that you want to display. So if you found this video helpful, be sure to click on that like button, subscribe to the channel for more videos, and I'll see you in the next one.